Okay, so to set up the daily BMS, I plugged in the Bluetooth dongle into the BMS and you'll go and uh, open up the Smart BMS app, download it if you haven't already, go to the App Store on iPhone and download Smart BMS or go to the Play Store and search for Smart BMS. There's also a link on our website, but open up the Smart BMS app. You'll see that there's local monitoring or remote monitoring. We'll click local monitoring. You should see your dongle that just here where it says DL4017. That will be your dongle if you don't see it. So I'll remove it by hitting the minus button. If you don't see it, hit series. And then you should see the dongle recognized. If you don't see the dongle rest recognized, press the button on the uh, Bluetooth dongle again. If that still doesn't work, check all your connections, including the balance wire in the back of the BMS. If that still doesn't work, get in contact with us and then we can um, attempt to send you out another one. Um, hit the plus um, icon to connect that Bluetooth dongle. Tap on the dongle itself. You'll need to wait maybe, I don't know, five seconds and then it should show up on the app, which it just has now. So to set up the BMS for the very first time, what you do is down the bottom, we'll click preferences. Under the first uh, setting, you'll see protection parameters. We'll go through and update these settings. So out of the box, these are usually the settings, but make sure that you set them up with the settings I'm about to give you. So cell vault high protect, change this to three point. You can put it 3.65. I recommend putting in 3.6 as that is the, um, oh, it's so 3.65 is the maximum voltage you should charge these cells to. However, there is not much capacity between 3.6 and 3.65. There's bugger all. So I would rather have the extra safety of not overcharging my cells. So I set it to 3.6. When you put in that setting, it'll ask for the password. So I'll go one, two, three, five, six. Okay, that's default password for the daily BMS. Okay, I'll hit set and you'll notice that the um, setting is now updated. Cell load vault tech, I set that to three volts between three and 3.6, you're getting around about 80% discharge. I certainly wouldn't be running it below three personally. Okay, so some high volt, uh, sorry, volt high protect. All that is basically how many cells you're running times by your cell volt high protect. So in this instance, we've got four cells in a 12 volt configuration. So all I do is I basically get my calculator, okay? And I go 3.6 times by four equals 14.4. So that's what I put in here. Okay. If it's a 24 volt system, you go 3.6 times by eight, it should get you 28.8 and so on with uh, your 36 or your 48 volts. Some volt high, uh, low protect. Okay. So same thing. What is your cell volt low protect times it by four and put it in. So four, four cells times by three is 12 volt. I'll change that to 12. The 24 again, it's, it's actually, what is it? 24 to 36, 36 and for 48. So system is 48. Okay. Diff volt protect. Okay. So this is where you want the BMS to shut off if the cells are out of balance by this amount. So 0.08. Okay. If it hits 0.08 variance between cells, the BMS will shut off. I'm happy to leave it at that because realistically with the active balancer, they shouldn't be getting out of balance that much anyway. Charge over current protect. Now, if you've got a 200 volt, uh, sorry, 250 amp BMS, okay, the charge current protect should be half of that. So if it's 250 rated, it's 125 as the charge over current protect. If you've got a 200 amp BMS, it'll be 100. Okay, and discharge over current protect, whatever your BMS is rated for. So if it, again, a 250 amp BMS, change it to 250. If it's 200 amp BMS, change that to 200. Cell characteristics. Okay. So it's automatically detected that they're LiPo4 cells. So I don't need to change that one. Rated capacity. Put in the capacity of the cells that in the kit that you've received. So um, in this instance, I've got 202 um, amp hour kit uh, cells. But if you've got 280, 230, 130s, whatever it is, just update the, the capacity in there. Cell reference voltage. These are LiPo4 cells. The nominal voltage is 3.2, so you don't need to change the cell reference volt. Sleep waiting time. Okay, out of the box is 3,600 seconds. I would actually change, or I change this to 65135. 
okay? And that just basically means that the BMS shouldn't really go to sleep at all. SOC, now currently the SOC, which stands for state of charge, you can set what the percentage is, okay? So don't think that because you're saying 50%, you've only got 50% capacity left, it's a guide, yeah? I will say with this, can you leave it as is? And the first time you get your cells, try and charge them up to full. So try and charge them up in this instance to 14.4, okay? And then once it's hit 14.4, change that to 100% if, if it hasn't automatically changed. At this stage, just leave that to whatever it is. Balance, open, start, bolt, okay? So this is similar to the active balancer, but we're talking about the passive balancer inside the, the BMS. So where do we want it to start balancing? Now, you can leave it at 3.2 if you want. I personally want to have the, uh, the passive balancer working whenever the cells are out of balance. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get it to start at three volts. Now, it's a controversial sort of subject. There's other people out there saying that you should balance them until later in the uh, charge profile. Um, I don't agree with that. Um, so whatever you want to do there, but I put in three. Balance open diff volt. Okay. So how much the, uh, are the cells going to be out of balance with each other before the passive balancer starts to try and balance? So I, again, I leave that at 0.02. That's fine. Connection ports, you don't really need to do anything in this screen here. It should automatically be detected. So I would leave that as is. Temperature protect, the only major thing I would change in this screen is the low temperature protect settings. So for the charge, I would change that to zero. You shouldn't really be using these cells in a below freezing situation. So I change both of those to zero. You might even change it to one or two degrees Celsius, just to give yourself a little bit more of a buffer. In cell setting, sorry, system settings, there's really nothing that you need to change in here you'll see that you can rename the bluetooth dongle if you want i'm happy to leave it as is but yeah if you've got maybe three or four of these or even two of these connected in parallel or even for example you might have an active balance in which you've got a bluetooth dongle to you might change the names for it which one you want to charge and discharge switch here that's just basically turning on the ability to charge or discharge from the bms heat switch so again with uh, with, with the daily BMS, you can have it set up so that it's connected to a heat pad. So that's that setting there. I can see they've changed the app a little bit so the BMS software can be upgraded from the app. Previously, you had to do it through the PC. So I'm assuming that now you can um, upgrade it from the app. Data reporting, timestamps and that sort of stuff. If the BMS fails or something along those lines, it's got a log now where it didn't used to have a log before. And then down the bottom, you've got a few features. So you've got reboot, reboot, reset, and reset password. So reset password is basically if you want to change the password yeah, in the Bluetooth. But yeah, in terms of the settings, that's the main settings that uh, you need to update. So if you've got any other questions, feel free to reach out either through our chat or uh, send us an email or even give us a call. Uh, so yeah, that's basically it.